Yeah, thank you very much. On the first question from Chijina, um, asking that um, we've seen that um, the advanced economies, the U.S. and other and some advanced economies have signaled a policy of normalization, which is that they want to withdraw liquidity or some of the stimulus they had provided as a result of COVID-19, that they wanted to withdraw them from, from the economy by raising rates. Yeah, that, that is true. Normalization will naturally um, lead to capital flow reversals, particularly for the emerging market and developing um, economies. Because usually, um, as a result, most some of those uh, uh, funds that were released into the advanced economies during the period of COVID-19, some of them actually flowed into the emerging markets to push for an exchange liquidity in the emerging market. But let me say that whether you call it fortunately or unfortunately, but I'd rather use the word fortunately for Nigeria, when those flows were moving to the emerging markets at a time when the advanced economies were offering stimulus into the economy, those flows did not come into Nigeria. And indeed, since um, almost or more than about two years ago, what we have been doing is to see to a gradual and systemic and orderly, systematic and orderly exit of um, foreign portfolio investors out of the country because they feel that the yields are not as high as they expect, and they also expect that there should be some more hedging instruments that will protect them in case they want to go out. You all recall that in the last two years or so, the Monetary Policy Committee had adopted a policy of, yes, price and monetary stability that is conducive to growth. And if we're talking about price and monetary stability, monetary policy position that is conducive to growth, it not necessarily means that the CBN or the multiples they had to monetary authorities had to adopt um, a somewhat policy of accommodation that um, that makes that brings interest rates to a low level, right? That will attract borrowers or people who have projects to embark on projects, and that is the reason you would have seen that we have aggressively in the last two years we have aggressively seen an increase in loans, whether to households or to small businesses or to large companies, at no more than 9% and for, for 10 years. The essence of this is that we believe it will help to boost manufacturing output, it will help to boost agricultural output, and that has been instrumental in us achieving, um, I mean, in reversing the recession, reversing the contract of recession, and then increasing output growth even while at the same time we're doing everything possible to moderate inflation. So what am I saying in essence? The firms that will be leaving as a result of policy normalization from the advanced economies did not come to Nigeria, and so as they withdraw them, there is nothing to withdraw out of Nigeria because we are not part of that game. So I'd like to assure us that it's not affecting us. However, another stand will say what has happened as a result of or what resulted, what caused the policy normalization in the advanced economy is because of rising inflation. And I must say that it is the truth that inflation has attained unprecedented levels in these economies. Is it in America? Is it in Europe? And I'll read some for instance. The U.S. inflation rate attained 7.08%. This happened to be the highest since 1982, unprecedented. The U.K. inflation attained 4.2%, which is the highest since 2010. In the EU area, inflation attained 5.5%, and it is the worst since the European Central Bank and the Euro was created. So you would imagine that if these unprecedented levels of inflationary pressure in these economies, they do not have a choice but to really think of how to aggressively rein in inflation because of the liquidity surface they see in the environment and the need to rein in prices to a level that is acceptable. Because most of them, 
most of those governments are already facing the threat of even losing their next election as a result of rising prices and inflation. But for us in Nigeria, like I read, our challenge is not just inflation, but also growth. And this is a policy we have been, we've been adopting in the last two years. And if we feel that this policy is working well, there is no reason for us to begin to, for MPC to begin to contemplate a policy of tightening because we, we see that we are, we, we are somewhat moderately tightening the, the, the liquidity system through our administrative controls using CRR discretionary powers that we have. So I think that's the reason we feel MPC thinks that we will continue to do what we're doing now because we believe it is giving us the results that we expect. Let's not forget, as a result of these policies that we've adopted, price, price stability that conducive to growth, we saw a reversal from recession after two quarters. As a result of the policy stance we've adopted, price stability conducive to growth, we saw inflation moderating conse consecutively for seven to eight months until we saw inflation uh, uptick in December 2021. So multiple policy fields thinks, unquote, that this is temporary. What happened in December is temporary. It is transitory. But there's a need for us to look at it again and monitor it. Because we saw in December 2021 both um, the core and the food trending upwards. We would have expected that even food should still be trending downwards. But of course, we're looking at it, we, we, we think that it, can be re it will be reversed because the harvest for 2021 was very, very good. But we have noticed a few challenges that we will address um, over, over time. So nothing to worry because those countries that are raising rates or even if there are some, comp some emerging markets that are following them, by raising rates, those economies are indeed facing pressure because they will, if they are not already, facing capital flow reversals from their economy. So we are not in that game, and that is why we are not following them um, in that direction. We want to remain where we are right now, hold, watch, because we believe what we are doing is working well for our country. Again. Um, I want to say that the rice harvest of 2021 farming season remains very good. In the past years, we hear about flooding here and there, but at least during the whole of 2021, we never heard about flooding. Um, we, we believe that the output and the harvest remains very good. I think the process, like I said, is how to gather the output in a productive and efficient manner so that this food can move. Um, about the rice pyramid, this is, this, we did it to test, to test our will, and those who feel it can hold party. But I can tell you that what you saw in those pyramids is just a ma tiny fraction of um, the quantity of, of um, paddy rice in our possession. And I'm saying, that we will aggregate them, we will continue to aggregate those rice paddies and we will sell them to millers and we would like to appeal to the millers that they should also be considerate. We are going to look at every transportation logistics that they are looking at. But Nigerians must receive rice on their plates, in their dining tables, or in their dining rooms at moderate prices and we will walk through this and that is assurance we give Nigerians. We received about uh, 294 projects, they have been assessed, and uh, I'm, I'm told that about 60 of those projects have been validated as okay and good to go. But what will happen, like we said, is a, is a promise that must be kept that on the 31st of January 2022, we'll announce the first set of beneficiaries uh, under the 100 for 100 program, and Nigerians will be publicized for Nigerians to know. Um, who they are, what, can, what is the employment generating capacity of those businesses, what is the raw material sourcing capacity of those businesses locally, 
because we're saying that the essence of the E100 for 100 project is to source fund project that will create employment and stimulate employment, fund projects where raw materials after installation, raw material content will be very high locally and import content will be very, very low or indeed close to zero. So we would announce that there's not a problem. problem. Nigerian Security Printing and Meeting Company prints and means cash for the CBN. And CBN circulates cash to the banks. We will try as much as we well to force the banks to come and take those cash and to, the, to, to dispense to their customers, particularly low denomination. So I do not see any problems, um, but this is an information that we are going to take on board. And I'm sure my colleagues that are here that are dealing with those will look at them immediately. Well, let me say that um, protection, protection of bank customers or users of banking or financial services remains uh, very, very important and sacrosanct in our, in our lexicon in the CBN. Uh, I'm aware that there is uh, the association of um, uh, infotech uh, directors or heads in banks and they continue to exchange information about um, uh, cyber crime issues, or emerging issues, or emerging matters in cyber crime, and how the criminals are moving, and how we can stop them. But I'm sure we all know, and we can attest to the fact that cyber crime has reduced considerably in Nigeria, and we will continue to do everything to ensure that. But let me say that since its launch about three months ago, Nigerians have continued to gradually adopt eNaira as a fast and reliable means of exchange. While trans trans transactions recorded range from P2P, that is person to person, or person to merchant, P2M, bank to person, person to bank, and bank to merchant, and merchants to bank, the person to bank and bank to person constituted 90% of what we see in the market. And as you would have observed, we spent the last three months observing and monitoring the system and addressing issues mostly around initial onboarding. Transactions of the system have been super fast and remain free for now by design. The inara is account based which means it requires a digital identity. The system was opened for the bank which essentially means one would need a BVN and an account number to be able to create a wallet. Stringent validation procedures were enforced to preserve the integrity and security of the system. We feel that the, uh, you must have a BVN and you must have an account to be able to access it. And we also find that this has created some kind of um, yeah, constraints on people about onboarding with BVN and the rest of them. But again, we believe that what we did by the use of the BVN is the best so as to avoid fraudsters from hacking into the system. Most of the complaints received were mainly around the inability of prospective users to onboard and activate their e-wallets due to a mismatch of BVN enrollment records. The bank has therefore been working to simplify the process of updating such information together with Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, NIPS, and the Deposit Money Bank. Considerable progress has been made with the release of locked accounts for re-onboarding. It is also now possible for foreigners to onboard as long as they have a BVN. I'm also happy to announce that with a recent assignment of the E-Naira USSD code by the Nigerian Communications Commission and by the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, and we thank them, Nigerians without a smartphone who represent the majority of the population will, also, will soon be able to onboard and conduct transactions using e -Naira by dialing code 997. In line with its initial desire to create an ecosystem where innovation will thrive, the CBN is engaging with the fintechs and other industry players to create a bouquet of products on e naira platform. While transactions on the system have so far mostly revolved 
around moving money to and from bank accounts. Tests with licensed payment services providers are ongoing to enable payments using eNaira on e-commerce platforms. This will enable small and medium, and medium enterprise businesses and other commercial service providers to offer their products and services and accept eNaira as a means of payment and exchange. As part of our commitment towards meeting our targets for financial inclusion, we are also working on a framework that will leverage the existing and new infrastructure to soon extend the services of eNaira to the unbanked. Notably, CBN together with its stakeholders intend to embark on a rigorous awareness campaign to create the necessary understanding of the operations of the e-world, of the e-Naira. So those are the things we are doing on e-Naira and we remain very, very optimistic that we are on the right um, course. We are trying to do everything possible to make sure that um, we don't go in that direction because we believe in what we are doing. Last eight months, we've seen inflation moderating. We believe that what happened in December is temporary, and we have looked at various issues. And primary about is why do we see prices going on? NPC looked at it, but we will look at it again in the coming meetings. We found out that prices at farm gates are in line with our expectation because they are somewhat moderated. However, prices at the markets where our statisticians take, take their survey are high. So if prices at the markets are high, there is therefore some problems between the farm gates and the markets. So we see logistical problems, essentially bordering on transportation, Essentially, also bordering on maybe destruction, maybe destruction of food produce, operational items from farm to market, and we're trying to see how, what we can do, and that's why we're trying to encourage people who are interested in looking at how to resolve the logistical problems of delivering food from farm to market to come in and take advantage of some of the interventions that we have. We feel that holders are here playing their games, those who buy and hoard, wait for dry season for prices to go up so they can take advantage at the detriment of innocent Nigerians. Luckily, we started a program last year where we said for our own repayment of our loans under the Anko Bora program, we will receive the produce into our own, our own silos and our own warehouses and we will dispose them and sell them to the real end users, whether it's the millers, the rice millers, or the feed millers who need them to produce so that through that mechanism, we can be seen to be competing with the herders in the market to um, moderate prices. It worked well in 2021, because between February and around August 2021, the Central Bank released on a monthly basis 50,000 tons of maize monthly through our own, through those we recognize as feed millers, and I'm sure the maize, I mean the miller, the, the feed milling association, they saw that this, this actually helped in moderating the prices because if we didn't do what we did between February and around August 2021, it would have been worse than we saw. We also have aggressively ensured that the Nigerian Commodity Exchange really comes alive. Luckily, the exchange is under um, the control of the CBN. The board um, will eventually be inaugurated, and they will run independently. But we will give them all the needed support for them to play the role they are supposed to play as a large commodity exchange that can hold different produce in our country and be able to compete with those who think they have some money that they go and borrow from banks and begin to hoard products for their own advantage when we get into a dry season. So we are ready for it, and I can assure us that the prices will not accelerate the way people are expecting. We are looking at all the, all the issues involved, and I'm sure by the time we come into the next monetary policy, we'll have good stories to tell 
about the trend. But I think it, the issue remains that we see logistical challenges from in moving food from farm to market, from farm gates to market, and also the activities of hoarders, and we're going to do everything possible to stop this. this doesn't happen. Now, on loan sharks. Um, what we have done is to say that there is no need for you to go to a loan shark to look for a loan. People normally will go to loan sharks for loans because they are desperate, they cannot access the banks. And we find in this group mainly people who are vulnerable, the small people's households who need some small amounts of money to do their business, but they cannot find, they cannot access bank finance. As a result, look, go to loan shark, who will charge them. If, for instance, you took say 100,000, and they tell you in the next 90 days you will repay 200,000. Uh, those are loan sharks. Uh, it's like twice the <laughs> twice the amount, two or two times of the principal just within 90 days. If you don't, they seize your property or seize your bicycle or seize your television to collect 200,000. We can only just continue to advise that there's no need for you to go to loan sharks because um, fortuitously the central bank has put in place uh, the avenue through which you can raise your finance. Is it through a targeted credit facility or is it the small, small and medium enterprise uh, businesses that we have set up through our NILSA microfinance banks? You don't have to know anybody. Just get onto the portal, fill the form, send your data, if your data is correct, you will be able to access loans. And we have large number of testimonials about people who have accessed the facility without knowing anybody and they have benefited from it. So I can only just advise you not, not to go to loan sharks. I want you to know this. You say, what is CBN doing to stop loan sharks? I can assure you that if we know them, if we see them, we will deal with them. But they reside in the rural communities. We are not, in the, we are not policemen. But when we find them in an organized setting, we clamp down on them and we deal with them ruthlessly. But I can only say that don't approach loan sharks. Go to institutionalized loan institutions to take your money so that when there's a problem, we can reach them to deal with them. We don't agree. MPL is not rising. In fact, we really, uh, the committee reviewed the banking sector uh, financial indicators, financial standards indicators. The banking system financial system, financial standards indicators remains very, very excellent. The banking industry remains strong and resilient, and uh, they are doing their best. NPL, for instance, in the month of December, dropped to 4.85%, the lowest in almost 10 years. And we intend to continue to sustain it. So NPL is not rising. I also disagree with you here. I hope I have the right to disagree with you. I have the data. Thank you very much.